Uh, in studio, Rob Lowe, Michelle Sadat, and via telephone, Steve Emmons as well. Good morning to all three of you. Robert, good to see you again. Good morning. Thanks for having us. Michelle, thanks for coming in. Thanks. Steve, thanks for joining us by phone. You bet. All right. Great to have all of you here. We're talking pickleball. It's the fastest growing sport in America, maybe across the world for all I know. And you've got a tournament coming up. We talked about this last year. Well, how much did you make last year on this? We grossed uh, over $30,000 and netted about 26000 That's great. Mm -hmm. Yes. Good rate of return. <laughs> the first year was 15000 netted ten. How much do you think you'll do this year? It's, uh, it's unpredictable, but I hope that we can uh, surpass that. It might be unpredictable, but you can still make a prediction. I, I think we're going to surpass maybe 35. 35? 35 to 40. You. you agree with that, Michelle? I, I think Rob can do anything he puts his mind to. We know that. <laughs> and with the support of our club and the community, absolutely. Steve, absolutely. I understand, Steve, you're a gold medalist? Yeah, I've been playing for about three years. I uh, just picked it up as a you know fun game in a buddy's driveway and uh, immediately fell in love with it. Uh, started playing a little bit at the rec centers around here, and uh, fast forward three years, I'm a senior pro, traveling the country, uh, do a lot of coaching, and uh, sponsored athletes. So uh, yeah, it's been really great for me. Steve, who was your buddy's uh, the driveway? Who owned the driveway? Well, he is a, a local legend, <laughs> named of uh, Sean March, the volleyball yeah. coach at Boston High School. Yes, uh, I was <laughs> uh, very familiar with that setup in his driveway. Of course, I've yep. known Sean March for a long time, and uh, my daughter played for him. Uh, okay. And uh, I saw that setup, and he asked me as a, as a local lawyer, any issues with, with liability here, the way I have this court set up in his driveway? And I said, well, I, I'd be a little concerned. Uh, maybe you ought to go play at the, a rec center or someplace else. <laughs> Oh, my. No doubt. No doubt. But, uh, yeah, a lot of people have got their start there in March's driveway for sure. Yep. Steve, tell me your gold medal story. Uh, well, I've, I've actually played in uh, around close to over 40 tournaments now. Uh, I've had multiple medals throughout. Uh, some of my highlights have been um, I won uh, a gold medal at Flushing Meadows in New York where they play the U.S. Open Tennis Tournament. Uh, I had a mixed mixed doubles win up there that qualified me for the national championships in 2022 uh, out at uh, Indian Wells Tennis Garden. I uh, have also, um, this past summer, got a silver medal in the national senior games in the highest, uh, highest level of mixed doubles there. Oh. And uh, Steve, can you make some money doing this? Um, the money's not a whole lot in playing, but uh, coaching has, has been okay. It's It's been at least allowable to, to, to finance all my traveling that I'm doing with this. So, it's uh, yeah, it's worked out pretty good. That's great. When is the tournament locally, Michelle and Rob? The the tournament is uh, March 9th and 10th, which is a Saturday and Sunday. It will be held. The venue will be at uh, the W. Randy Smith Set Recreation Center in Inwood, mm -hmm. West Virginia. How many players can you accommodate? This year we changed the format a little bit. We could we could do uh, over three hundred, probably about four hundred. What's it cost to play? It costs fifty dollars per per uh, event. On the, on Saturdays is strictly um, uh, gender uh, specific. Males with, with males that's fifty dollars. Females are uh, females and females uh, gender specific specific. And then on Sunday is our mixed players, female and male. So okay. if you you can so therefore, if you play on Saturday it's fifty dollars. If you play on Sunday it's another fifty dollars. All right, and uh, what's are, are there age brackets that you'll be? It's using uh, here? strictly uh, for adults from eighteen through. Uh, we have two age groups: eighteen through forty nine is the first age group. The second age group is fifty on out. However old someone wants to play. Do you have a beneficiary of the money you're raising? So Michelle. last year we set up our grants program as a club and we uh, raised through our three different fundraising events $57,000. Um, we gave that back out to the Boys and Girls Club, CASA of the Eastern Panhandle. Um, we helped with a paving project um, at South Middle School. Uh, we helped open up a new uh, clinic at the uh, Good Samaritan Free Health Clinic, a new exam room. Um, we also gave money to the Martinsburg Initiative for their at-risk youth um, mentor program. And we gave money to the Berkeley County Parks and Rec. 
So this year we will continue to look at our seven areas of focus as a club when we determine who to give um, the proceeds mm -hmm. of this event to. So we look at literacy um, as well as uh, child and maternal health, peace and conflict resolution, disease prevention, water and sanitation, economic community development and supporting the environment. So those are kind of our seven areas of focus as Rotarians. Mm -hmm. um, and so that is what we look look at whenever we give out our, our grants. So Raw putting this event together is really amazing. Pickleball, three years ago, you didn't hear about pickleball that much. And um, he was really on the forefront of putting together a tournament for our area, brought people in from all over the country, um, got our rotary name out there to um, to the community. And I mean, it's a, it's a great event. So we're really thankful to have this as part of our, our club's events excellent mr gilstrap i got pickleball running uh, here on on my screen and it's a very i i've heard of it it's the first time i'm seeing it it looks like it, it's it's tennis on a tennis rules on a much smaller court is that essentially what pickleball is well it's, it has its own defined rules but it's basically if you could picture uh, playing table tennis and enlarging that table tennis mm -hmm. the actual regulations um I think it's 20, 20 by 44 is the regulation size of a badminton court, official badminton court. But it takes all four people to remember the scores. But uh, uh, three years ago, uh, the average age was 66. Two years ago, it was 44. And last December, a year ago, is 38.4. I don't know what it is now. The newer breed that's coming in, a lot of them are tennis players. If you play racquetball, you can play this sport. But, it's, um, but like you can't play tennis and racquetball. With this sport, everyone, if you're a golfer, so you don't have to give up anything else. People who are injured, people who are re uh, rehabilitating, not injuries from pickleball, but other injuries they have in life, they can play this sport. And uh, it, it's just a phenomenal sport. And it's not so much that the sport itself as it is the gathering and the, the participation of everyone that comes the together. socialization. Yes, Real Sports on HBO with Brian Gumbel did a segment on this a couple of years ago. And it was uh, kind of when pickleball was really taken off uh, at first. And there were people who, it was almost like a, like a religion to them. It, it, it helped them rehabilitate injuries. Uh, it, it introduced them to a whole new group of people. Uh, yes. I don't want to say the word addiction, but it, they, playing this became a thing. Uh, and then the downside of it was the noise that's made specifically to the sport with the racket and the ball people that lived around these courts that have been put in were like were, were just protesting because of all the noise of the it's doink 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 back and forth back and forth yeah they're they're well let, let's start with this fact which i heard yesterday 40 million people now estimated to be playing pickleball mm -hmm. in my community they are converting tennis courts yes. to pickleball yes. courts they're expanding the parking area i play as do a lot of other residents in my community it's just it is phenomenal and kudos to you for riding the wave uh, and steve you could probably speak to this i understand now that the sport is attracting major investors like lebron james and tom brady and others that who are pouring money into some of these leagues where it, you're talking about you know making a little bit of money in these tournaments i think that's only going to grow too and steve could address that as well because steve's seen it firsthand yeah, right yeah, it's absolutely growing, and at that level as well, there's uh, Major League Pickleball, which is what you were mentioning there, that uh, some, some rather famous people have invested in. And there's also two uh, pro tours, the PPA and the APP, that run these giant events. Uh, it's being televised on you know, ESPN, CBS Sports Network. Uh, Tennis Channel has gotten involved with it. So once that starts happening and you know more money is flowing into it, it's, it's just going to keep growing because it – I think the main thing with pickleball is its ease of entry. I mean, anybody can play this bag on sport. I mean, you don't have to you don't have to play it competitive at the level that me and some of my friends play. But you can take someone who's really never played a racket sport, might be in their sixties or seventies, and they can be on the court playing in a ha playing a game in a half hour and having fun laughing with their friends. And and that's that's just something that you know the money's all great, but it's just. It is so easy for everybody to be able to play. It's just wonderful. And, and to address the noise issue, Rob, that you raised, John McEnroe has actually now started researching how to build a paddle 
that is, has noise suppression in it, so you don't hear that mm-hmm. all, all morning long when the, people are playing. The people who live by the courts were oh yeah very much annoyed by the constant sound. They're trying to get yeah. reduced hours and whatever, but it's yeah. but it's become such an incredibly popular sport. And again, Rob, if you want to uh, help raise money here for a lot of different causes that Michelle just highlighted a moment ago, how can you register for the pickleball tournament that's coming up from Rotary? There's a two-page flyer. It is out on Facebook. You can also go through the uh, the Martinsburg Rotary Club uh, website. You'll find it on there. Uh, we've done a, 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 a media coverage of this whole week, uh, multiple uh, uh, events for to get the word out. And people like Steve and others who have the passion for this sport, they have their own connections, their own websites and all that they reach out further. We actually had people from Georgia. Um, well, my son came in from Dallas, but we had people from Georgia, Delaware, and I think um, Connecticut, if I'm not mistaken. And the interesting thing is there were at least three couples that actually came and stayed in a hotel and played both days. So the fact that wow. you're seeing people traveling here for this event, it's a non-sanctioned event, which is another day to explain about sanction, non-sanctioned. But the for people coming to this event, um, going on the basis of Steve and others in the community, they think it's been a, a very viable event and they think it will continue to grow. What's the format, Rob, in terms of, uh, let's say I'm, I'm a beginner, right? but I want to show up and play, but I don't want to come up against somebody like Steve because he's going to just rip me apart on the court. Is, uh, do you group people by age or by ability as part of this tournament? Lay, uh, the, lay, the first two years, we because we only have eight courts at Randy Smith, uh, that what we did is we broke it down by uh, two age groups mm-hmm. that I've already mentioned, and then it was just intermediate and advanced. But this year, uh, the manager, we hire Pickleball, for the first two years, it's pickleballtournaments.com. Uh, we hired a manager from there to run this for us. But they merged, tournaments merged with Pickleball Brackets. Two entities came together. And now it's under Pickleball Brackets for smaller tournaments, larger ones, it's still Pickleball Tournaments. The point is, we hired that manager, and actually she, she moved out of the area. We're flying her back in for this, wow. uh, to do this. That's how important it is and relevant, because she makes everything run smooth and, and quickly. To, for the breakdown, she said, let's go with further divisions. We actually have divisions this year. It's by the skill matter. Sure. First, the age group, but the skill is 3 and under, 3-0 oh and under, and then 3.5, 4-0, 4.5, and, and plus, it goes 4.5 plus. Steve, I think, Steve, correct me, but you're, you're what, a 5-2, five, 5-5? Five, five? Yeah, I, my, my one rating is a little over 5 right now, so I'll, I'll be playing in the 4-5 and over event with my son Noah and uh, one of my friends in, in mix as well. So, How do you get a yeah. rating? Uh, by playing tournaments. Yeah, I mean, uh, you have to get so many matches in, and, and you will automatically be given a rating, and then it'll it'll get better and more accurate the more tournaments you play in. But that, that's one of the cool things about this tournament is, like Rob was saying, it, it is professionally run. Um, all the big tournaments I go to at all these different facilities, they're using the same software and uh, the same setup as this tournament. So even though it can be a great entry-level, you know, first local tournament kind of thing for, for people who are just starting, it's perfect for that. But we can also bring in some better players, and they're going to be happy with the situation too. Michelle, where do you see this thing going in the coming years? I mean, I think we're just going to continue to grow and um, definitely with Rob's leadership and the support of the community. I mean, we're just seeing more and more people playing pickleball, uh, more and more people interested. And as mentioned, you don't have to be a pickleball um, pro by any means to to play this sport or to play in this tournament. Um, And just to add to what Rob was saying, to register as a player, you just go to pickleballbrackets.com and type in the search Rotary. We're the first one to pop up, and um, that's how you can contribute to the great causes of what we're, uh, this money is going toward for our community with your $50 entrance fee. You're also going to have a great pickleball tournament experience as well. So, And to add to that, again, it's a, it's a three-prong uh, benefit. It's through the sponsorships, players, and the volunteers. It takes 75 volunteers, roughly, to run this for each day. Are they, are they all Rotarians? 
Uh, no, not all. So we bring other people from outside, um, but a lot of majority of them were. It was surprising that when we the first year that we did this, we brought the manager in. As I mentioned, we had an ice storm that Friday evening, and we didn't know the show was going to go on. It did, and we only lost four people. And someone standing in line said, "I can make a call." They brought four more people. We didn't lose a dollar. <laughs> and, That's awesome. But my point is that she she's done other smaller tournaments as well as medium sized tournaments, and she said. Uh, working obviously with pickleballtournaments.com she goes i can't believe you told me you would have volunteers you told me you have sponsorships and they were just wild about how well we did and then phenomenal for the second year so this year is going to be a challenge because there's many more tournaments that are going on but they're smaller than ours so again uh we we count on the sponsorships with the largest of five thousand it's a diamond platinum's 2500 gold is a thousand silver's five hundred dollars and bronze 250. and then the 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 players themselves making their 50 dollar entries uh, we we did about i think it was 12 thousand off of just the uh, uh of the players last year if i'm not mistaken uh, is there a fee to be a spectator no, not at all. And I'm glad you brought that up because you're talking about the elements of, like, Steve, the, the level of play. Mm -hmm. It always comes down at the end of the day. Now, you can have single matches, but we do not have room to get single matches in. It's all double matches. And at the end of the day um, of – of each day, but particularly that Saturday evening, uh, when it, Steve was uh, going for silver and gold. Actually, my son came up from Dallas. He he was two points out from getting in. That they got a bronze with one of the friends of Steve's that they that they played. The point I'm making is, I turned around. I could not believe how many spectators were. Yes, a lot of them were former players, but people were coming in on this, and mm -hmm. it, I go, wow, it was unbelievable. But we would not charge spectators. Steve, about a minute left, so uh, where are the best Pickleball ball players in the country uh, generally grouped around? That's a great question. Uh, generally, all the hot spots, you're, you're talking Florida, Texas, California. Right now, actually, the number one player in the world is from just up the road from here uh, near Gaithersburg. His name is Ben Johns. Mm -hmm. He has moved down to Austin because uh, there's kind of a, a hub of good players there. But, you know, there's a lot of players in every small town in America at this point. It's, it's great. Any, any place you go, you can, you can find a pickleball court. Who's I've the best? Ben, I've seen Ben Johns. He's ben? phenomenal. Who's the best women's player? Uh, sure, that's uh, Annalie Waters. Without a doubt, she's a 17-year-old uh, girl from Florida. And uh, yeah. she, yeah. she's Ben's mixed doubles partner, and um, mm -hmm. she basically wins every tournament she plays in. It's she's phenomenal. Been, she's a, been number one since like age. Sport. Yeah, she's been number one since like age fourteen or fifteen. She's phenomenal. Yeah, That's amazing. she came in the sport super young. She was a tennis player and a soccer player, and uh, just just better than everybody. These, these these folks are just incredible to watch live. Just uh, world class athletes at the top level for sure. Steve, thanks. Appreciate you calling in today. It's great to hear from you, Michelle. Thank you for your uh, involvement in this. And uh, Robert, uh, ten seconds. How do you register for this tournament, and when is it? As Michelle mentioned, uh, sign on uh, the internet, pickleball brackets, one word with an S at the end, dot com, and type in the search word rotary if it doesn't pop right up. March 9 and 10. March 9 and 10 at the Randy Smith Center in Wood, West Virginia. Thank you, Robert. Thank you all so much for having thank us. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you. And thank you, Steve. Thank you.